battling a brain tumor, the device that goes straight to the source to fight cancer. I've seen a big change. Giving Central Valley residents something to smile about, the dental clinic bringing hope to those who otherwise might never have received treatment. Plus, dealing with Alzheimer's, advice for the whole family on what to do after a diagnosis. Thanks for joining us. I'm Julie Musgrave. A device that puts cancer-fighting technology in direct contact with the brain. It may sound and look futuristic, but it's being used with great success right now at community medical centers. It's changed my whole world. Lori Renard and her daughter Lindsay received the news back in January no one wants to hear. Glioblastoma, stage four. Brain cancer one of the most deadly forms. I was scared, I mean, you don't, I'd never heard of it before. Lori says she didn't really notice the symptoms, but there it was, a mass, doctors say, on the left side of her brain. Traditionally, uh, treatment has involved uh, surgery, radiation therapy, and chemotherapy, uh, but now we really have a unique approach to add to that, and it uses electrodes to create an electric field that basically disrupts tumor cell division. Radiation oncologist William Silvera is treating Lori at Community's California Cancer Center using that device. It's called the Optune. It's got electrodes. It's a mini electrode disc, so it consists of four patches that we put on and change for her every three days. It weighs about three pounds, is carried around with the patient, and worn about 18 hours a day or longer. The goal is to make something that's very portable, doesn't limit the quality of life, and lets them go out and live. Radiation has improved survival, chemotherapy has improved survival, and now we have this new technique that slows the tumors down and really has shown uh, increase in survival. In fact, he says a recent trial showed survival more than doubled at five years using Optune. It doesn't hurt. It's not, it's comfortable as far as the actual, the cap and wearing, it's just the, uh, the little obstacles that this creates. Finding brain cancer, of course, isn't easy. Sometimes you, I get fumbled up just with a simple word. But Lori and Lindsay take each day as positively as possible and right there by each other's side. Gosh, you just never realize, you know, you just don't realize but what she's that, pers that person to me and uh, I hope I can be that grand. I hope we have a, have a grandchild soon, we hope. <laughs> so I hope I can give it back to her there. It's only natural that I'm there for her in any moment I can be. So she's my best friend. I mean, it's, she's everything to me. So I wanna fight this with her as much as I can. And the girls say their doctor is just as much in the fight as they are. He has sat with me through personal things that had nothing to do with what was going on with my head, you know, and, um, and cried with me. Any pain at all? Dr. Silvera says things are looking good. She has a resection cavity and it really looks good and there's no evidence of cancer at this point. I have faith that God is going to heal, heal, heal me and um, we'll get through this. After all, there's too much to look forward to. Lindsay is getting married in October. Big plans, yes, we yes, have dancing yes. to do. Yes, yes. <laughs> Meanwhile, Republican Senator John McCain was recently diagnosed with a brain tumor. It's the same type of brain tumor that Lori's fighting, glioblastoma. McCain's cancer was found following a procedure to remove a blood clot above his left eye at the Mayo Clinic Hospital in Phoenix. McCain has since returned to Washington and continues recovery. Community is one of only two places to have the Optune available. Otherwise, you'd have to travel to L.A. or San Francisco to get it. Lori says she is grateful for this access because, as she says, she feels at home, at home. Turning to another tough diagnosis to hear, Alzheimer's. It's a progressive disease that affects the whole family, but a lot of family members may not know where to start after a diagnosis. Dr. Dineshi Lianage with Clovis Community has advice. Dr. Leona Gay, thank you so much for joining us. 
Now we're talking about Alzheimer's disease right now. What are some of the first signs and symptoms that people may notice? So the very first signs are typically a difficulty with short-term memory. So they have difficulty learning things, right? And um, they may or may not notice it, but most often it's actually going to be family members who will notice it and bring it to the attention of the individual and the physician. It is a progressive disease. What are some yes. questions that families should be asking when they first hear a diagnosis? So it can be quite overwhelming to be given that diagnosis. Because unfortunately with Alzheimer's disease, it's one that does not have a cure. We can't prevent it. And it affects cognition, which can be frightening for patients. The idea that they will maybe not even be able to recognize family members eventually. So um, while it's overwhelming for the patient, it affects the entire family. It's going to be imperative that they talk about what the disease means in terms of the illness trajectory, how it's going to affect their functioning, their cognition, behavior, personality, how it's going to affect the family, mm -hmm. right? And financial resources too, because um, very often it happens that patients can develop delirium where they get confused, agitated, they can become paranoid, combative, right? And when that happens, it can become very difficult for family members to care for them at home. And it can lead to placement in a long-term care facility. They could start with their primary care physician, and then they could have a referral made to a neurologist. And if they require more information that they'd like to look up online, um, there are websites like the Alzheimer's Association where they can uh, look into treatment options, into what clinical trials are out there. And particularly, there's a 24-7 um, call helpline where they can call for information and um, get uh, recommendations for local chapters for support. Because families need a lot of support through this process, as one can imagine. I believe it. Dr. Liana Gay, thank you so much for your advice. We certainly appreciate it. Pleasure. Still to come on MedWatch Today, making the admissions process a little easier when you show up to receive treatment. Our healthcare hero is there for you right from the beginning at Clovis Community. Meet him after this. Plus, the wearable device that's keeping track of your sun exposure even when you're not.